What's the best thing about being a dentist? What- Getting to meet different people, different backgrounds, and the first thing they come and they say is, "I hate dentists, but I like you." <laughs> That's a high point for me. Why did you choose dentistry as your career? And the only thing that I was good at was science. So I was like, "What can I do? I can be a doctor." I think I made the easy choice. I should have maybe pushed myself a little more, but I was only 18, 19, I think, when I was, you know, choosing a career. And everyone told me, "Oh, you know, it's better. You'll, you know, be able to have your own time, and you can schedule your appointments." That's what everyone is told. Even yeah, I was told the same thing. Yeah, you have space for other things in your life. Do you do all this yourself, or you have a team? Oh my God. Team A and Team B. That's me. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I do everything, the entire process, and I've made each and every piece by hand. Exhibit A, one. basically proof of something. You know, when you want to back an argument, and there is proof, like just in slang, yeah. uh, my friends are really cool. Exhibit A. Got it. So Got it. exhibit basically proof of my creativity, despite me being from hardcore. <laughs> study background hi everyone welcome back to a brand new episode of the math therapy sessions podcast our guest for today is dr shahzeen porbandarwala she is a clinician based in mumbai who loves treating kids dr shahzeen is also the founder of a cement work startup called exhibit a the audio podcast is available on spotify and anchor the links to that and the description down below drop a like if you like this video and consider subscribing if you end up loving it and also don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on the podcast till then enjoy the episode so dr shahzeen what is exhibit a Exhibit A was basically my creative outlet in the lockdown where I was not doing dentistry and I was bored my husband was in one room quarantine and I needed a hobby so I just happened to watch videos and you know I did a small class and I was like wait I'm so familiar with this material I have to try it and that's how it came about and I started so is it, it similar to the ones you use in dentistry Uh, I mean, so we use dental stone and we use dental plaster. Like right? when you said it's familiar, so it's familiar to what? So basically, I started with our dental mixing bowls, okay. spatula. So I was like, wait, okay, I can do this. Okay. Ah, uh, it's similar to mixing for a cast, mm-hmm. and I was pouring in a mold, so it was exactly the same procedure. The only thing that I did differently was add colors and. do the finishing and use a different material and you know basically just explore mm-hmm. and that's how exhibit a came about and that's why i'm working with cement so how did you come up with the name it's a very unique name yeah exhibit a, a basically um first of all i found it really cool i'm going to be very honest but mm-hmm. it's basically proof of something you know when you want to back an argument and there is proof like this like just in slang yeah. uh, my friends are really cool exhibit a like you know got it got so it. exhibit a was basically proof of my creativity despite me being from such a you know hardcore study background understood yeah so yeah that's why exhibit a came about and i loved the sound of it so then how did you start it how did you like uh, this whole venture so like i told you i started it when um, lockdown happened in in the, the lockdown, lockdown and i needed to do something everyone was baking banana bread and i was like ye to hoga nahi humse ghar jal jayega so <laughs> i started making this stuff and you know then my i i had so many pieces hmm. and i just started distributing it to my friends and i gave everyone something that i made and they were like dude this is really cool you should sell it i was like where am i going to sell it and Luckily for me, at social there's this really cool pop up called Deluxe Thali that happens, and I managed to get a spot there. It happens there. every few weeks, or yeah, it happens practically every month in different different uh, social outlets, and they keep doing these cool brands and you know homegrown brands. And I said, let me get out there and let me just try. So I did a little bit of R and D because I had to sell a finished product, right? Mm-hmm. Like what we do in the lab is. pretty raw hmm. but this had to look pretty so yeah. i did a little bit of research and i managed to make a nice cute finished product and 
the with the intention of selling it yeah with the intention of selling it because i was so curious cuz everyone really liked it and they were like this is so cool i haven't seen something like this and i said okay i'm going to give it a shot mm-hmm. and me being extremely shy which i don't seem to be but i was it was a really big deal for me to get out there and you know talk to people and explain to them what i'm doing but it was a great experience like putting yourself out uh, on the public platform yeah. and on social media yeah i so still struggle with it it's a ball game all together it's a different ball game i still struggle with my instagram to be honest with you i've made over 2 300 pieces mm-hmm. like a ton of pieces and what i've put up on my instagram is barely a fraction mm-hmm. of it and i'm still struggling with making reels i'm totally lazy and you know because the products you have deserve reels and you know it deserves to reach out to a wider audience yeah because they're really really cool Thank you. and something um what i mean it, it's a unique thing and it's yeah. a uh, for different purposes for decoration for gifting purposes yeah and you have many things in your um, Yeah, I have a bunch of different products. I make everything from ashtrays to like tea lights to like little trays. But those ashtrays things are not on the. I mean, they. I mean, to buy them, you have to go on a so different website. So you right? can. I usually people message me directly on Instagram, but right now I've tied up with a company called Slim Jim. Okay. And they they saw my stuff and they loved it and they said, okay, we want you to you know keep your products mm-hmm. on our website. So now I. That's so cool. Yeah that mm-hmm. was really cool that was a highlight for me and now they have an entire you know online store with my stuff on it so for me that was a win like that's a what, big like, flex that's the beauty of it like when you start something on social media you don't know who will get associated yeah. and where it will like you know take yeah. you so do it do you do all this yourself or you have a team Oh my god team A and team B that's me <laughs> that's it that's it i do everything the entire process and i've made each and every piece by hand and it's been a learning curve because some things break But is isn't it like stressful it is uh, i do have a small because of bending and mixing and using like my hands so much i actually had a neck issue because of wow <laughs> No, like especially if you plan, like if you plan to do this long term, you yeah. need to. Yeah, I, so I basically need equipment now. I'm at a stage where if I'm going to do any more exhibitions, which I keep getting enough for this month, I had hmm. to stop because I was feeling dizzy. And then the doctor told me because you're getting a spasm in your hmm. neck, you're getting dizzy. And I was like, okay, I need to take a break and fix this, and then do more exhibitions because I go all out. Like I'm just. I make like two hundred pieces, and it's a At lot. At one go. Yeah, I take a, I take like a month. But do you plan to hire more people? Is it in the plans? You know, my plans are very different from for exhibit A right now. I'm not gonna hire. I think I need equipment more than anything. Like you okay. know, just something to mix. You know, like a. You know, like a blender attachment or something like that. But no, I'm not going to hire people. I have everything in house. My logo was designed by my sister. Oh. <laughs> I gave my husband the printing work. I said I can't do this. You have to do this, otherwise I'm not going to have you know a logo and a. But w- what are your reasons for not hiring people? Because because it was so small and it's so intimate, right? It's mm-hmm. so tiny. Like people will call me and be like, "Okay, I want this color, this color ashtray, and I'll make it for them." and when i'm exhibiting i do a lot of stuff but otherwise it's a part time thing you know it's just my creativity and the time that i get to switch off from the world cuz my next question was that do you plan to do this full time or is it still a part time thing it's for you it's part time if you like my stuff and you want it i'll make something for you i enjoy doing that but do you plan to go full time anytime soon haven't thought about it but right now no okay. but i i keep doing it right like, because i have friends who will be like i want this and i want that and i keep making stuff mm. but uh, yeah. it becomes full time during an exhibition for okay. me okay but otherwise it's not full time okay. i do you, uh, do you plan to open a physical store no Or i would like to keep it online so and so you intimate. do everything at home i do it on my dining table i have wrecked my dining but, table like, do, <laughs> Don't you need more space because your orders are getting? Uh, you know what? Actually, it's not too bad. Like I, uh, 
I'm a little organized, mm-hmm. which helps me. And uh, when I'm when I have a lot of pieces, my table is full, mm-hmm. and I employ my darling sister to come free labor and <laughs> help me with everything. Uh, she's been a great support system. So I don't hire outside help at all. Like everything and is. You don't made. plan to anytime soon. No, not really. Like I want to see where this goes. Really, I just started it a few months back, and the response has been pretty good. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's art therapy more than anything, Got it. Got you know. It. And I, I give it to people that actually enjoy the pieces or respect that creativity and the place that it's coming from. Hmm. So for me, it's not just a product, you know. But uh, like you know, you have set designs, or is it customized? I mean, every design is different, or you have set designs, and then in that people can you know pick yeah. and choose and customize according so the, to their liking. The beauty of this is i do have a set shape which is the mold that i get right okay. but within that i can do any uh color combinations i put gold foil i have a matte finish i have a gloss finish and mm. it's usually each piece is like a snowflake it's always different because when i'm pouring it i don't know how the colors are going to play out you know there's very little control so, i have yeah so sometimes the patterns the patterns are different you know they'll What if a customer wants the exact same pattern? You can't do that. I'm not gonna do that. I would not even. I would not even try. To, I wouldn't even try because there's no fun in that. Like mm-hmm. I can even the colors. Sometimes they play out differently and they form their own patterns. Mm-hmm. So I would not say yes so to. You, so every product is unique. It's unique. It's always different in terms of the color and the patterns. The shape, of course, depends on the mold. Are there any uh, product categories in that different types of products? Yeah, like like you mentioned ashtrays and uh, so are there anything? Uh, yeah, which... I'm doing a bunch of things. So I have been doing tea lights. I've been doing candle holders. Uh, two, three different types of ashtray shapes. Um, a moon tray, a sun tray, and a capsule tray. So that's my inventory for now. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, Every time I see like a cool mold, I go and I buy it and I experiment. And if it works, it works. So it all depends on the molds, right? Right, right, yes. right, right now. Yes, and some molds work, some don't. You know, so it's a hit or a miss. So mm-hmm. I have some, you know, useless molds li- lying around my house also. And how do you sell them? It, it, it's an online thing only, or? Yeah, I I mainly focus on Instagram, and right now, uh, it's the website that's taken my stuff. So those are my primary. You have your own website. And word of mouth. No, hmm. I use the, the Slim Jim website. Got it. But it's word of mouth, and people just come to me. You know, they've hmm. seen my stuff, and they've followed me on Instagram. It's small, but it's all very organic, and, and you know. You have Deluxe Tali with you. Yeah, I've done three with them. And I had some other offers from other uh, exhibitions, which I at that time I just could not keep up, you know. So I said I'm going to take a small break, and then I will, you know, come back and do it. And that's the beauty of having this homegrown thing, right? You can take your time with time, it. Yeah. And so, what's your favorite uh, design or work out of the bunch? Oh God, I made these really cute uh, mini bowls with a lid. And I used to find them extremely fascinating, and like I think I have one in every color now. <laughs> Those are my absolute favorite. Any favorite ah. color in that? Oh my god! I actually can I tell you very honestly, I love white. White. White, plain white with like gold. But um, every time I do a color, it becomes my favorite color. So, so if you do white products, uh, do they get discolored or anything? Like no, that? because I coat. Everything with like uh, an eco resin, mm-hmm. so I double coat all my stuff. So to some extent, they become uh, water resistant, heat resistant, mm-hmm. and you just need to wipe them. So to some degree, they're stain resistant it, also. Yeah. yeah. So uh, because I was going to ask you that, what is the whole process of making one? Oh my If god, just, uh, it's an elaborate process. Just an overview. <laughs> No, it's pretty simple actually. You mix the cement, you get the colors in, you pour it in the mold, and you wait for it to dry. Okay. Right? I know it sounds simple, but it's quite a process because it's hard. You're working with your hands. True. And um, after it dries, I demold it and I cure it. Mm-hmm. So I leave it in water for as long as I possibly can. Then okay. comes sanding. Uh, you know, just final checks. Coating, double coating. So it takes a long time to do this. While in one sentence, it sounds 
pretty easy it's not that easy and what has been your family's response to this they were especially shocked especially your husband he was he comes out of quarantine and he's like what is all this in my living room and i said well i went oh, so a little crazy no, <laughs> no what i no was clue. doing he just he didn't think it would he there would be like a table full of stuff you know one fine day and there were like some 50 odd pieces and i'm just distributing pieces to everybody be like please take this like there's too much and he said okay wait stop it let's just why don't you sell it because it's really cool and you know hmm. see what the response is like and i i i did it mainly as an exercise for me to get out there because i told you that i'm not very out there right so i needed to i needed to use this as a learning experience and i think that was amazing it was like a gateway for you yeah and it was definitely a get- for me mainly i thought it was such a big uh, lesson to learn right when you have your own product and you have to sell it and you know what are the difficulties and like you manage all of this podcast on your own that's exactly what i do from mm. start to finish i'm the whole and soul you know so it was a really good a um, mental exercise also for me to you know push out of my comfort zone and talk to people and go to the exhibition and you know deal with the challenges that mm. come with it so what was the reaction to the products you made finally i mean they loved it they loved it everyone has something of mine now at home and uh, yeah my niece absolutely loves it she wants something in every color she like that's mine that's mine <laughs> that's mine i was like take the store home any new uh, product categories you plan to you know start in the future um yeah actually i'm continuously looking at evolving this mm-hmm. so one of the things that i have been thinking about is making a table actually it's my dream project i haven't come to it yet a, a table yeah like a side work. table like okay. a table and that is my dream project i've been studying it but let's see when it happens because i need some space you know and i need to make my own i may have to make my own mold and you know um also that's strengthen the, the material and all of that so it's a lot of work so, so i think uh, that's a lot of r and d also yeah yeah that's a lot of r and d so i keep researching and you know trying to learn new things but if it works it's going to be yeah i think it's going to be pretty great uh, but let's see so uh, where do you pl- where do you see exhibit a going in the future where do you, you plan to take it so one very interesting thing happened when i started going for these exhibitions with all my products my sister got really inspired and she did her own line of organically dyed scarves and you know some really beautiful stuff and she's like you know you're doing it i want to see where my stuff goes as well yeah. and so she started hers and then you know i started including i started taking her stuff to the exhibitions as well and for me i would think that exhibit a if it were to work out the way i wanted it to work out it would be a creative space for any homegrown brand to come and just showcase their stuff and use the platform to sell their stuff mm-hmm. is what i would want for it not just my stuff you know just keep it open like It sounds like a great plan. Yeah. So when you're not making cement works, you're also known as Dr. Shazeen. Yes. So why did you choose dentistry as your career? Uh, to be honest, uh, when I was young, I had these great plans of doing a lot of social work. Okay. I was really somebody that wanted to go out of my way and do something for other people. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't monetary. It was nothing. And the only thing that I was good at was science. So I was like, "What can I do? I can be a doctor." Hmm. And the day that I had to make a choice, I think I made the easy choice. I should have maybe pushed myself a little more, but I was only eighteen, nineteen, I think, when I was, you know, choosing a career. And everyone told me, "Oh, you know, it's better. You'll, you know, be able to." you know you have your own time and you can schedule your appointments that's what everyone is told even yeah, you told have the space thing. for other things in your life and i was like okay that sounds really cool and yeah. that's what i'll need going forward mm-hmm. and so i said okay i'll i'll do dentistry it's still medicine yeah. it might work and that's why <laughs> by the way i had no idea i had no clue about what it takes to be a dentist what happens inside i had zero school? clue i was absolutely clueless 
so you did dy uh, you did bds from dy yes how was that experience overall <laughs> it was very very challenging do you want to know about my first day in college i, I would love to know <laughs> that i mean when you okay, said so when you i was said i was a late admission student okay mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately i had come in a little a few months later my admission got done and i entered college a little later than most students and i had like i said i was clueless right i had just got a list of subjects and i had got my timetable i mm-hmm. had my books with me and i had to go for something called as anatomy and so day 1 i enter the anatomy uh dissection room as we called it and i had no idea right that you need this uniform and you need your badge and you know you have to be a certain way so i just walk in because it's my first day i haven't got anything i'm still the so college was still giving me stuff you know that you have to get this 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 mm. this this and i walk in and i get pulled up by the teacher so everyone's with like you know on their respective uh, dissection tables with their cadavers where everyone sitting properly and i come yeah. in <laughs> the teacher like you that girl with long hair you come in the front and i was like yes ma'am she's like you come for a fashion show or what i was like ma'am i have no idea it's my first day you had a lab coat with you or no i think i i was wearing my lab coat <laughs> just my lab coat she's okay. like where's your name plate and why are you dressed like this why is your hair like this you've come for a fashion show now you start modeling start giving oh, us all oh. a ramp walk and i was like what and i'm looking around everyone is staring at me and there are like six cadavers in that room and i was like you want me to do a catwalk for all the diseased like was she serious she, she was damn serious she was mad at me and then i had to explain to her that ma'am this is my absolute first day and my stuff is like i still have to get a name plate and you know I, this is my first week. class <laughs> that was my initiation into the life of dentistry and from there on it was it was just down it was challenging <laughs> it was super challenging to put it easy out there nee no one had ever spoken to me like that and i didn't think that i would be a med student and get you know asked to do especially by the teachers like you would expect the seniors but then and the then teachers. later on i realized that okay everyone was pretty chill about it they like yeah okay you had to do a fashion show for dead people <laughs> Fine, you survive. But you did that? No, I didn't. No, right? I just stood there. Yeah. I was shocked. <laughs> I froze. But the very fact that she, like you know, she even said that was yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, was super judged, and I, you know, it could have been pretty simple. That excuse me, you're not in your uniform. You don't have this, this, this. Mm. So you know, the next time you come to class, you should have all this with you. Yeah. It was a pretty simple conversation. I didn't think that I needed to be pulled up in front of, you know, hundreds, a hundred students, and you know, just be humiliated <laughs> for. So uh, apart from that, apart from that, how was like overall? Uh, I think in- uh, because it's so challenging, it teaches you a lot of life skills. Um, and that's what i take away from it you know i take away life skills cuz you meet different kinds of people mm. and you learn to navigate your way because in one college there are like so many people right and everyone's different some different are great some are toxic <laughs> so you learn how to dodge the bullets true true and you know the faster you learn the better it is yeah but- the faster you get thick skin and you you know you have to accept your fate like mm. there is somebody out there who will not like you and will deliberately try to you can't please everyone i mean you can't that's please what i like anyone yeah <laughs> that's true that's anyone there'll be a few good souls as well but uh, you learn to dodge the bullets like i said any special memories you want to share with us from um you mean good ones or bad ones ah uh, <laughs> one good one bad <laughs> one i'm going to i think okay i'll tell you the good ones of course there was this uh, you make your friends and you know you make the most of a situation you're in the middle of nowhere you're in nerul yeah so we used to go a lot and hang out at like this one shisha place which was a standard for us we would go and chill over there after college um a really good memory for me while it's a very toxic memory was once I was getting totally harrowed by a teacher, and my patient actually stood up 
and told the teacher to the teacher, to the teacher. Okay. said that she is your student and i can see that she's giving an exam but you're continuously humiliating her for no reason i've been watching this from the beginning and you mm-hmm. have no right to do this and for me that was a really big thing i don't yeah like the patient like you know standing the patient could tell that you know what was happening and for me that that is a moment that is forever etched in my mm. memory you know one thing you wish you did more of in your ug days oh my god study <laughs> <laughs> that we all wish for but uh... <laughs> study a little more i wish i took the time to just understand uh, what was happening around me and what i needed to do i think i was i didn't know what it goes so fast like you know first second <laughs> Yeah. By the time you are, you reach internship yeah. and you don't know. Like, yeah, you look back and you're like, I don't know how I survived this, and maybe I wish I knew how mm. to survive this. Like, if I had to take any tools now, that's what I would take back with mm. me. You know. Any lowest point you would want to share with us about college? Yeah, like oh my one. God, there are tons, yar. One, just one. Oh gosh. I mean, You know I was so stressed before every exam mm-hmm. I had a pattern I would mm-hmm. be sick I would be sick before every exam because I was so stressed I remember writing my first paper and at that time we had to write in the basement okay and so they were cooking egg burji there and all the smoke is coming, coming in the <laughs> and you're writing a final exam paper and as usual I was sick so I'm drinking glucon d and I'm powering through it um Yeah, I mean for me those 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 were really stressful moments. I think but I wish, you have seen through them now, right? Yeah. I barely survived. I know. <laughs> I barely survived. I don't know if it's this tough for everyone, but mm. for me it was like I said in the beginning it was very challenging. I think it is, but it's different for different people. Uh, yeah. For some it's academics, for some it's just like, you know, Uh, going out of your way to talking just to talk to people yeah i know people in my class who have not spoken to another person at all yeah. there's a girl in my class who has not spoken to anyone ever in the last 5 years only when it comes to any exams or anything so for them for her the challenge would have been just to you know yeah. muster up some courage and go and talk to people because it's such an intimidating environment, environment. right it is highly competitive it is highly stressful and to top it up there are people out there who are just waiting to like for a downfall yeah for your downfall and i would say that there are the, there are you know people who i mean they have your marks in your you know in their mm-hmm. hand so you have to be a little wary right and you don't know why um, they're going to pick on you mm-hmm. there is no reason like imagine mm-hmm. sitting in class and I told you this story before the podcast, but I I can share it if you want. It's it's on you. Like I remember you. I remember entering class with all my stuff. Okay, I was ready. There was no way that I was going to get thrown out of this class because I knew I had to be prepared or I'm in trouble. Yeah. And uh, I remember the teacher asking me, "So you have all your stuff? You've done everything?" I said, "Yeah." And then she said, "Get out." and so i had to take my tray and walk out i didn't plead i didn't beg wow just like that yeah at that point of time i i was just in enough control not to tell her fuck off mm. and that was my way of saying fuck off i just took my uh, tray and i walked out but because after after that moment uh... after that i was i was a free for all man i was like the little seal in a shark tank <laughs> It was done for me. That was um, the most harrowing. But if 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 you would not have stood up then, you know, it would have stayed with you. Ki why did you do that? That thing? is the maximum I could do mm. is just take my tray and leave. Yeah. I didn't want to beg with her. I didn't want to plead with her, and I didn't even want to understand because I was quite certain there was nothing. Right? I was ready that day for my class. But it's so strange. Like uh, you don't ha- you don't get any justifications or. Uh, the reasoning behind it yeah no one tells you you know why they hate you there is no reason you know for that kind of uh, 
I don't want to use the wrong words, but that's my experience, and that is how I was treated by some people. Not all. There were some really good souls. I remember I was crying because of the same person. I was crying hysterically during a viva, and my other professor was. He was really sensitive towards it, and he really helped me through that situation. Mm. But uh, it's been hard. I think every student in dental school will have us. story yeah. similar to yours yeah. but not everyone you know has the courage to either stand up yeah. or talk about it they yeah. just uh, take it yeah. and they keep taking it until yeah. it uh, i think enough people need to share their stories because i feel like for the larger good i hmm. think the system should change now it's you know we look back and we're like okay at that time there was no you know understanding and but now we've grown i mean yeah. look at where we are now there is so much awareness about mental health and there is no excuse in fact i think that all these colleges because it's such a high stress and high pressure environment mm. that all medical dental schools should have counselors they, they should you know so according to you apart from having medical counselors what changes would you like to see in a dental school Oh my god first of all if you have these teachers that students are complaining about please get rid of them like they have to go cuz some of them are really mean they're not adding any value to this system where we for our country want to churn out good doctors they just toxic right? they're just toxic and quite honestly they are not even teaching you the right that, stuff mm. there are teachers out there like i i remember one teacher who was teaching us a small bit in surgery was telling us in marathi ikde cut takaycha and stuff like that and i was i was like main notes kaise banao iska how do i make <laughs> notes and how do i apply this in my examination mm. so i think there needs to be a little bit of you know people in higher authorities need to hear the students out we're not just complaining because you know somebody cut two marks from our uh, you know answer sheet or whatever we're complaining because this is this is real stuff like you know but there's a clear lack of communication between the high authorities and the students yeah uh, absolutely uh, because they don't even come to know what is happening inside colleges they have zero idea you know there is a like i just want to say this like i remember in our surgery department we used to get thrown out all the time all the time but there was still a lot of learning happening in that department right if you've True. not studied you get punished which mm. is an extremely fair deal yeah. we were afraid if you're going to bunk class you're going to be standing outside class i can understand those scenarios but these were just not required you know mm. i can understand punishment i can understand um, you know all of that but just without justifications yeah. like you know just generally torturing a student picking on people picking on people and you know and you have your favorites so they can do no wrong and they know they can get away with it that they is do. why they still do it the teacher that did all of this to me is still there hmm. she's still there and i remember okay i have to say this i remember that we had actually the students in my class had actually put out like you know they had signed a sheet saying god like we can't handle this anymore and this was say like a like 10 days yeah they years went back. to the department heads and they were like this is too much like we are not doing anything and we're being tortured we're not learning anything it's too much hmm. you know but there was no action and it's been more than 10 years i yeah. think yeah so my my basic thing is i'm not trying to you know abuse the institution or anything but i just feel like they should hear the students a little more got it i hope it happens and and, and i think many colleges now at least the medical counselor parts I've, i'm seeing many colleges having special departments for mental health and awareness at least dy has that's what i know yeah, of that's great mm. that's exactly what i would want it's a sign of changing times now sign of changing uh, times. i remember by the time i got in ragging was completely done mm. so we were good to go you know our seniors were just having fun with us and you know nothing major nothing mm. to cry about like it was very chill mm. so that was one change that happened but i think that this should have also happened, happened like yeah. you know it will it will eventually yeah. it will 
but it just so. needs a lot of people speaking out speaking out against yeah, it yeah i don't think they know our stories you know and i i'm sure there are many many students like me out there that hmm. have gone through this in many different uh, you maybe know maybe worse yeah but i think they must have had it even more i mean i was in trouble anyway everywhere so i just accepted the fact that maybe i was just a bad student so fine hmm but i'm sure there are many other good students and you know that didn't deserve to be treated the way they were and they deserve better got it so why did you choose not to pursue post graduation i think it i wanted to for the longest time i'll be very honest mm. uh, for the longest time i wanted to and then as time went by i just decided to first i decided to start working and see because i didn't know what i wanted to do in pg and as i went forward i i decided that maybe i'll when the time comes i'll do it and that time for me didn't come hmm. so that's why i didn't do my pg but i am always open to learning other things like for me um learning is my criteria and it doesn't have to be a degree so i've done a bunch of things after and how do you like Uh, be, since you've not done post graduation how have you kept it, like how have you upgraded yourself as a clinician yeah there are plenty of courses that are there out there i did one with the ida and i also did my fellowship in general anesthetic uh, it was a course called encode with um, dr sandesh maikar and dr ramesh shankar okay so i did that one that was a really nice school course that i did and i think that's the best way to upgrade like i remember in between there was an online uh, little you know seminar happening so i participate in the topics that i like mm. you know that are relevant to me clinically and that's how i keep myself out there i also um i've worked with a bunch of different people so every time they would suggest that okay i think you should go and learn this i mm. would go and i would take their word for it and do it you know so whether it's pediatrics or whether it's orthodontics i've generally try to gain as much knowledge as i can from different places and do you have any special inclination towards a particular field in dentistry i actually really loved working with kids pediatrics yeah the only one great thing that happened with dentistry for me is i got to go for these camps and i really enjoyed them mm-hmm. i don't know if it's like i just enjoyed going out there and talking to people and you know helping them understand you know it's such a basic thing right and just giving them that little bit of education it's and time exactly importance yeah. of oral health yeah is uh, i mean that's what people don't understand the yeah. importance so i signed up for a different a bunch of different camps and for me that was that was the best part of it mm-hmm. and what changes have you felt in dentistry since the day you started way back in uh, say like 15 years back and now um so it's obviously technology things mm-hmm. are just getting better and better and of course what you learn in college and what you learn out there are like two different things you know back in the day i remember how we were doing those adams classes in i've never used an adams class i have before, no yeah. idea After now everyone's doing like a clear aligner so mm. that really is i'm sure they are using it i'm sure they are but for me for me that's you know the big jump and leap mm. that has happened in dentistry there are so many lasers stuff we only read about in books now you get to see them people are using them in their clinics and mm. you know it's it's pretty cool i love technology for me that was like the big change that i saw and what's the best thing about being a dentist what do you feel is uh, is the best thing about being one um i think you spend a lot of time with your patients when mm-hmm. the patient is on the chair you have multiple interactions with them you also at some point become a counselor yeah. and you are just sitting and listening to them and so i think that interaction is really beautiful yeah getting to meet different people different backgrounds and the first thing they come and they say is i hate dentist but i like you <laughs> <laughs> that's a high point for me uh, no but are you happy with your decision of becoming a of- a dentist you know what when i look back i feel like i i wish i had done something else that's always been sound off yeah sorry so um that's always been a you know 
small little nagging thing i wish i did something else or i picked a different field or i should mm. have just done mbbs uh so i would say that i've always been on the fence mm-hmm. was this the absolute right decision for me i will never know i will mm-hmm. never know but it gives you tools and you work with those tools and you try to make the most of it so that's where i am right now and i've of course given myself the space to be creative mm-hmm. whether it's just i went for a you know 15 day course to goa uh, you know a year back or whether it's dancing mm. or doing exhibit a and learning new things i think that i've made the space for myself and i wanted to ask you how important is the role of a your of 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 having a partner who's un, like understanding when you have dentistry and another thing going on in your career he's extremely proud and supportive he mm. actually really loves that i can be this mm-hmm. and i can be that and that you know i have the capacity to you know push myself and go out there so he's extremely supportive and because i have seen people who have uh, who could have um, live up to their potential if not for their partners i've seen i've, I've seen it happen in front of my eyes where they had unsupportive partners and yeah. and that just pull them down before yeah. reaching their prime or whatever they they could not reach it that's a whole other podcast i know but uh, <laughs> so i just wanted to ask you because you are doing so yeah. many things at yeah. the same time i think he understands that i can't be tied down mm-hmm. to one thing yeah. and that for me to be myself mm-hmm. and be my happy self i need to explore different things i've always been that person which is why i think i couldn't just stick to dentistry or couldn't just do my pg mm. for me i've always wanted to explore and learn more and learn different things mm. i don't know most people would call it adhd <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful to hear so we come to a last part which is the rapid fire round oh god so... am i getting a hamper i better be going home with something <laughs> you'll you'll definitely go home to a happy hamper <laughs> <laughs> So the first one is uh, your favorite BDS posting, <sighs> which was at community dentistry. Oh, <laughs> it was three months long. It was fun, dude. <laughs> we didn't do anything over there. <laughs> no, but no, to be honest, but work wise, we we had to go to a, uh, a there was a temple in Washi, yeah. which had its own dent uh, dental clinic. So we were posted there for one month in CD. Dude, that's so cool. We didn't have that. Yeah, so so we used to go that. So we used to get uh, pedas and nashtas and from the temple that's and everything was so sweet. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't have that, but uh, to be honest with you, I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed OS actually. Mm-hmm. Um, for yeah. the clinical part. Yeah, I did. I did, and I thought that there was a lot of good learning happening there, and I felt really cool, you know. So I would say OS. <laughs> Okay, uh, favorite dental instrument. Damn! Right now, the only thing that's been my constant is my mixing bowl and spatula. So that's my <laughs> instrument. It. I oh, think and the cover, the little cover. It's the best of both worlds. I love worlds. that. I think th- that's a common thing between both of them, right? Yeah, the I use all bo- three. I use all of that. Favorite restaurant. Oh gosh. Uh. favorite restaurant i have a bunch you want only one three three i would say i wanted one but then i'm going to say three okay i'll say i'll say one no, right three. now no three no no we'll go with three okay i love swati because i'm a total bombay girl the and i love one? i love my chaat mm-hmm. uh, for a good fancy meal i would go to slink and bardo okay and um one I, more. i i really enjoy the food at coco because i i love I love the food there. Coco is definitely on the list. Okay, awesome. Uh, favorite brand? Now, I've not specified any clothing or shop. It's you said f- any, yeah, any. like randomly whatever comes yeah. to my no, head. No, your favorite brand. Like there was this brand. Okay, I'll make my husband happy and say Dope Coffee Roasters. <laughs> No because I mean I really can't do without it. Um ever since I got addicted to coffee, I move around with this mm-hmm. with my black coffee so I have to be honest. We need your husband on the podcast soon. He has to come. Mm. Working as a dentist or working for Elemente? 
टाइम um so yeah my coffee uh my chakna i go i i carry like seed mix with me cuz i'm always hungry mm-hmm. so i always that's, have like some khana with <laughs> me that's true yeah and my keys the keys yeah my keys i'm just paranoid like my keys are you always forget the keys that's yeah so even if i'm traveling abroad or anywhere like my house key is with me mm-hmm. like it my keys are always with me like i do not leave without my keys even if i'm going to the gym which is just one floor below my house <laughs> inspiration for exhibit a uh, like you have a brand in your mind I mean you yeah, want to take I I don't have the name but you know I was doing this little course online course and there was this Spanish brand that was working with concrete okay. and that is really the inspiration and that is really the level that you know I look up to like they make a uh, stuff for like you know park benches and they make all mm-hmm. these really large scale concrete or uh, stuff and that's that's my inspiration got it last one describe your marriage in a line in one line in one line can be one word but oh god friendship i would say but that's one word that's one word i have only a word for it <laughs> because it really uh, you know it includes everything that mm-hmm. i would want in a partner like what do you expect from your friends mm-hmm. that's what you would want in a partner and that's really what i have he's and a, it can't get better than that it can't get better than that he's he's really cool thank you dr shazeen for oh coming god, on this oh my god you can stop calling me dr no. shazeen and thank you for having me i didn't think i was cool enough to come on this podcast no. we thought we were not cool enough for for, no. for you to ask but then here we are So thank you for taking your time for this podcast. We'll again talk to you soon. Like you have, I mean, we have many topics to talk on. Yeah, I want to uh, come back. I think this was such a fun and great experience talking to you. And we'll see you soon. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. How yeah. was it? Was good. Yeah, was good. How did you feel? I felt great.